My name is Ted Pelkey and I live here in Westford, Vermont. Um, I own a truck repair in Swanton and a warehouse that we run. I grew up in Essex Center, Vermont. Uh, my parents owned a motorcycle shop, Frank's Place. It's owned by my brother now. Um, that's still in business today. When, when, when did you first ride a motorcycle? I don't know. It was probably, you know, five, six years old. Uh, yeah. We bought this property about the same time I opened up the business. To go to Swanton, it's a it's 30 minutes a day, it's 25 miles each way. So we figured we would build a place here at home and, and move it home. And so where where would the actual business be? Uh, the business would sit out front of my house um, in the meadow out there. Yeah. First step is you you know go to the town and you fill out the paperwork and get in front of their DRB and start jumping through the hoops that they want you to jump through. You file something, they they've got a bunch of time to look at it, then they deny it, you know, three months later. Then you've got to appeal it, and then you gotta go through the appeal process, which take it three, four months, and pretty soon you've been another year. We started the process we're at right around eleven years ago. Um, what was the first stage where you were like, oh, I think there's a problem here. Like, I think they don't actually want me here. Um, from day one. I mean, it's just, they didn't like the sounds of the type of business we were going to put in. You know, three people or a few people on a board control your existence in a town. And, and that's the way it is. It's, sure. you know, small town politics is what it is. We've spent thousands on lawyers. I mean, we spent 30-something thousand dollars in court the first time. This last time we went to court, I'm sure it was another $25,000 wasted. Um, you know, there's lawyers, there's an engineer involved, there's, and, and time, and, and my life, you know, my years of my life when you're in your prime, what are those worth, you know? Some people in my situation would have probably went and bought a gun, but instead I said, well, I'd rather just put up a big middle finger in the front yard and just tell them what I think of them. So we got it made and, and, and we put it up. And there it is today. So how often do you get people stopping? Every day. Every day. Do, do they come up and ring your doorbell or do they just stop and take a picture? Uh, some people come up, want to meet me and shake my hand and tell me how great it is. Um, we had people come from Arizona to see it. Um, just just for that reason? Yeah, just for that reason. Um, this weekend, it was very busy. Uh, but, you know, it, it, it is amazing. Very amazing. It's lit 24-7. So at night, it's all lit up. So we put a base in the ground out here. It's a 16 foot pole. That's pretty self explanatory. Hello, my name's Charlie O'Brien, and I'm a chainsaw sculptor. We'll do anything I tell people. Can't do a rainstorm, but anything that the wood will hold together can be done. <laughs> When Ted first called you, what, what did he say? Take me through that. Oh, actually, he stopped in and uh, just said he was, you know, he said I uh, got a, you know, <laughs> proposition for him looking for a middle finger. Um, and I, I wasn't sure whether I actually wanted to do it at first. But then he started talking and telling me about what was going on and where he was going to put it. And I thought, eh, you know, I could do that. The real be beginning after you decide you're going to do it is just make a clay model and to do this for 
couple reasons just to see where the cuts are going to be. I can kind of pretend I'm using a chainsaw when I actually make it. Then I can measure this, see how it's going to fit into the log. Because people think logs are round, but they're not. <laughs> see, so the first one was left-handed. Yeah, the first one I made was left-handed and it didn't fit the log at all. So I had to turn this one around and I had to make another one. I got the left-handed one inside, but I think the finger is going to be removable. <laughs> Channel 3, I think, was the first one, and they came to see me Monday. Steps from Route 128 in Westford, a towering sculpture stands. We can't show you it, but people in town can tell you what they see when they drive by. It's a big hand. It looks like a fist but with one finger lifted up. Um, Channel 3 came, WC, XCOM, Channel 5, uh, CNN called, the Boston Post, the Boston Globe. There's a few others in between that called, yeah, that I don't, yeah. A lot of radio shows um, called, did interviews. I was wondering if there was anything the town could do about this, and I called the select board. The select board told me that because this is considered public art, there's nothing they can do about it. A man called here, um, called me, wanting to know where I had purchased the finger from, um, and he said that Kid Rock wanted one. So, you know, I told that Kid Rock, give me a call, and, and lo and behold, he did. Um, and, and he wanted one for, you know, uh, for his property in Nashville somewhere, I guess. And uh, I got him a finger made. And I have it, you know, we have it in the garage here, and we're getting it ready to go and head it to Tennessee. And me and my wife are going to deliver it out to him. Oh, no, he said he had got a call from, from a guy, uh, Robert Ritchie, who I had no idea who that was. And he said, I bet you do. It's Kid Rock, and he's looking for a, a middle finger. <laughs> and I said, that would, you know, cool. I could do that. <laughs> and I did it mostly under the tent over here. And it was, you know, Christmas season, so there was a lot of people around. You know, they'd look at me, is, is that what? He, yeah. <laughs> And then they laugh and go, I could use one of those. <laughs> it is a hate crime. Total discrimination, not being treated the same as the other people in the town. Um, it's, it's, that's the way it works, especially in the town of West. Have you, uh, other than this, have you had any experience with the town being unfair to you? Uh, it's just, you know, we lived in a trailer park, they closed. It wasn't right what they did there. And they hated the fact that, you know, the park people, as they referred to us as, didn't move out of the town, we moved here. Um, you know, and I think you're, I think you're blacklisted right from that, right there alone. So, cause you know, that was trailer park trash. They wanted that all out of their town, but it stayed. So, um, you know, it is what it is. They can tell you at the DRB meeting they hate you to your face and not remove themselves from the board. Um, I don't see how anybody can make an intelligent decision on a town board that's telling you he hates you to your face. So, you know, how does, you know, that that's the confusing part of it all. What, when, so someone told you they hate you to, to your face? Yeah, yeah, the DRB chair, the what, man who runs the, the meeting. What did he actually say? He said, I want everybody to know I hate this man. We have a past. Um, and my lawyer asked him to recuse himself, and he said, no, nah, I can be fair and unbiased and not like him, too. I think I saw where the chair's in there. Can you open that door, No, sure. Oh, okay. It's call to order the Westford Review Board meeting for Monday, September 25th, 2017. You guys ready? Should I, can I sure. start? Um, I'm going to begin with being honest and upfront on a record with something. Um, there's been a history uh, with this whole thing, and Ted and I have had some history going back quite a ways of conversing. And I want it to be known that last year, about a year ago, we conversed after the denial of the building envelope. And I received a threatening text from Mr. Pelkey regarding that, and I told him I did not ever want to hear him again. You have hear that from with him you. again. Don't interrupt him, please. So that's the kind of crooked town we have. What uh, What is your past with him? 
Oh, who knows what his problem is? Did, um, did you know him prior to? Oh this? yes, yes, yes. He's yes. Yeah. What were your interactions with him prior, like you know, ten years ago? I worked for his father-in-law for sixteen years, and bad things happened there. Hmm. So we're just gonna continue on the hatred. Sure. Yeah. Don't interrupt me. It wasn't a threat. Control your client, please. <laughs> I, I asked him to not contact me ever again. And well, as you know, he has a history here of being belligerent. That's why we have a shit in the county sheriff here. So that's why we have to hire someone to come here. There we go. May 28th, Westford Select Board meeting to order. First item on the agenda are changes to the agenda. Ted, you're up. You wanted to talk to us. Yes. We just want to come clarify the episode with our planning. Coordinator. Listen, yeah. Coordinator. Um, I've spent $70,000 and about six years of my life playing with this. So in this conversation with Melissa at this point in time, I'm fairly upset. And I did say that I never understood why people could get mad, go buy a gun and shoot somebody. But now I truly understand how that could happen. That is what was said. Never said we were going to kill anybody in the town office. I, I was upset, yes. I, I, I was just upset with it all in general. That i got to be honest with you, Ted. We heard from the state trooper. Right. You agreed that was what you said. That there would be that there would be dead people in the town. Not in the town office. I did not threaten anyone. Well, what yep. we decided in a yep. meeting was to take that all into consideration after hearing from the oh, yeah. you know, yeah. the state trooper that made a decision I to do the no trespass. And that's what that's that's where we stand right now. You know, I guess people have different opinions here, but mine is we've already talked about it, and that's the way it stands. Okay. Have we got one? Okay. Next time. All right, moving right along. Uh, Did you get my email? Yes. Yeah. You didn't have the minutes for which meeting was it? The time to turn back was when you only spent ten grand. So for them to lead me on, the town, to spend all this money, this is them torturing you. This is their way of trying to torture you to probably try to make you do something irrational. Has putting it up made you feel better? Absolutely. It makes me feel a lot better. Um, um, you, you know, it had to be done. I mean, people don't stick up for themselves enough. Um, in, in this world, and um, I put it up to make the statement. I feel that um, whether the fingers, you know, help the case or hurt it, it's made me feel better. Because um, I could have stood out by the road and screamed that all day long, nobody would have listened. But you put that finger up out there, it doesn't say anything. It's quiet. It really makes the statement. And people are, are, are hearing it loud and clear.